graduated with a degree in economics in 1986 from the University of New Hampshire with an intense interest in helping low-income people live more stable lives through cooperative ownership. The Rock USA story re really goes back almost 30 years. In the first class that I had, a woman came and was trying to think of her project, but she came with a much more immediate problem. Her brother, who lived in a manufactured housing park, was about to be evicted because the park was going to be sold to a commercial developer. The way manufactured housing parks work is, is that the, the residents owned their units, but someone else owned the land underneath it. So we developed this model, and, and actually one of the first projects in that master's program was to develop a cooperative park where it was really driven by a real immediate problem. People were going to lose their homes. It was quite frightening. We didn't see it coming. We got a note under the door from the owner saying, uh, you got, was it 60 days to buy it or not? And I've already got a buyer lined up and ready to go. And we were like, where do we go and what do we do? I need people to understand that these really are houses. They, they aren't mobile. They don't move. Uh, we can't pick up and leave in the middle of the night. Offering affordable homes to families, families with kids, without kids, the elderly, it's very important that they have that sense of pride in what they own. The New Hampshire Community Loan Fund started helping homeowners in mobile home parks in 1984 when Julie Eads, the founding president of the Community Loan Fund, was the frontline organizer at the Meredith Center Cooperative. She helped this first group of homeowners purchase their 14-home community in order to preserve it and save it from closure. I had no idea how we were going to come up with the money to buy this place. And I think a lot of us felt that same way, is how in the world would anybody loan us a million dollars? Your words were, you know, we can do this, it's what we do. So I joined the New Hampshire Community Loan Fund in 1988 and was a community organizer. I sat in the living rooms and church basements uh, all over the state working with homeowners who were deeply committed to purchasing their communities. I became impassioned because they work so hard to both make a purchase happen and then to help their community succeed. Our accomplishment is that we've kept it and, and we've proven to ourselves that we can do it. One of the challenges was well, it's okay to do it in one place. What does the business model look like when it grows really big, when we're talking about multi-million dollars of investments, parks all over the country? In 2005, the Carson Institute uh, undertook uh, economic analysis of the impacts of resident ownership and determined that homes in resident-owned communities sold faster, sold for more money, and that homeowners felt more secure. That research was instrumental to building the momentum, building the financial support, and the interest among other practitioners in other states. We had an opportunity to take our New Hampshire work to a national program. And by 2007, the business plan for Rock USA had been written and a network had been built. In our first five years as a national organization, Rock USA has assisted 51 communities purchase and provided over $68 million in financing to help those communities. Buy the co-op. Even if you've got to pay that little bit more than you wanted to pay to get it, it's worth it in the end to have that control and that feeling of ownership. You can't ask for anything better. The University of New Hampshire and the Carson Institute specifically have been right along with Rock USA through our development nationally. You know, we're not just about theory and research, but really look at action. We bring a hard-nosed approach to helping people think about how do we make this work so it's really self-sustaining but at the same time achieving social objectives. They understand uh, research techniques and presenting research in a manner that is vitally important to developing resources and building scale initiatives in the social field. Every opportunity we have we invite Paul to come back to UNH and talk to students. He looked like you not that long ago. There is a path to both living out your social values through business mechanisms and doing good in the world. It's this generation of students that has the wherewithal to really change the world for the better.